Um, and thank you to the organizers, Janice Sarah and others, for uh, inviting me again. We spoke to guys, Janice Sarah mentioned last time, uh, a couple of months ago, on topics that are of common interest to all of us in the room. And uh, again, I have some prepared remarks, but I will try and touch on um, some of the aspects that uh, Air Marshal has, has talked about here in his introductory comments. So the Indian military air power uh, needs a strategic reach, obviously, to safeguard the national interests. And this definitely requires a long-range presence that is capable of both preemptive action and swift retaliation. Uh, affecting targets at a range beyond a few hundred miles requires advanced strike aircraft capable of penetrating enemy air defenses and longer-range cruise missiles and ballistic missiles. <coughs> India can and is becoming a global power having its own military industrial complex that is as self-sufficient as possible. Keeping in mind that India is part of a global supply chain and increasingly we are living in a glo globalized ecosystem. While the Indian Air Force is poised to become a multi-spectrum air force with force multipliers and space-based assets, Indian companies will need to develop capabilities and capacities to meet such demands. So what does it take to build an aircraft and arms industry given the current threat environments and looking into the future? Talking specifically of the aerospace ecosystem, factors like the supply and quality of engineers, the supply and cost of blue-collar workforce, the depth of the supply chain and the potential to reach critical mass is important. Infrastructure and government support are critical inputs for the success. India has most elements of the ecosystem in place, and I was very heartened to hear Abhishek Jain's uh, rendition of what he talked relative to policy and, and technology. Over the next decades, India undoubtedly has the potential to become a significant part of the global airspace supply chain, and you see that happening with several of the OEMs. Uh, in partnership with Indian industry. Indian industry today has the technological capabilities to undertake complex manufacturing required for the sector. Indeed, there has been a remarkable growth in the sector as a large number of private players now have entered into the sector in addition to uh, the public sector that obviously have great advanced capabilities and continue to grow. The SMEs as has been brought up in the last session that I was hearing, continue to face hurdles due to high capital costs, low volumes, and long gestation periods of projects. However, they too have come up the value chain, and I could not agree more that technology and, and uh, technology that's applicable to the platforms and products that the country needs to integrate in a system design way are, are going to be the keys for success. And the, the pockets of excellence actually will lie with the SMEs as we move forward. So the best way to develop the aerospace industry in the private sector would be through unfettered <coughs> access to technology from abroad and collaboration with foreign OEMs. Indian industry continues to require relaxation of tax regimes, industry-friendly import and export regimes, support by way of funds for R&D, and raising the cap on foreign direct investment. Having said that, as, as mentioned in the earlier sessions, I think the policies of this government have been excellent and that the policy framework has been in place for, for folks to actually get in and capitalize on that. The three key elements that can aid the growth of the ecosystem through the TPP are namely predictability, timetable order flow, and the continuity in plans for procurement. We cannot expect to create an industry based on one order. Therefore, there is a need to create a long-term partnership with industries based on trust. On the part of OEMs, globalization and liberalization have afforded means to leverage manufacturing and service capabilities across various countries, creating a web of interdependence and partnerships across the global aerospace industrial landscape. The trend in the aerospace industry is towards building partnerships globally 
infrastructure, and network capabilities. With India emerging as a center for engineering and design services for many of the OEMs, major global aerospace companies are looking at the Indian market for outsourcing aerospace and defense production. The way forward for Indian aerospace firms is to develop strong competitiveness by offering good quality products at lower costs. I don't want my speech to uh, sound like a sales pitch, and therefore I'm just trying to give you some idea of some of the fundamental elements that are necessary, I think, from a technology absorption perspective, regardless of OEM or regardless of Indian industry, public or private. 